Hello everyone, this is lecture 81 of Principles of Electric Circuits. We have introduced the concept of mutual inductance since lecture 77. From this lecture, by using the concept of mutual inductance, we analyze the transformer, which is a very useful device in industrial practice. This is a diagram of a transformer. A transformer needs two coils, at least in general. In order to improve efficiency, the so-called magnetic coil is constituted by magnetic medium. Then, the magnetic field generated by the current of the two coils flow into the designed magnetic path. We have introduced about it in lecture 77. At present, the transformer core is nonlinear in industry. The analysis of the nonlinear transformer is more complicated. We will learn it in the electric machine course. In principles of electric circuits, we assume that the core is linear. That is, the relationship between the input and the output of the anti-transformer is linear. The conclusion obtained by the linear relation is also adaptive for the most situations of the transformer with nonlinear magnetic core. The transformer is a couple of mutual inductance coils. It has two ports. We usually call the left port, that is 1 and 1 prime, the primary side and 2 and 2 prime on the right side is called the secondary side. We generally think that the energy or the signal is supplied from the primary side to the secondary side through the transformer. The transformer can not only be used to transmit energy but also signal. It mainly function can be summarized as the following four aspects. First of all, it can realize the change of magnitude of AC voltage or current. Secondly, it can be used for the transmission of power or energy. Thirdly, because there isn't any electrical connection between the primary side and the secondary side of the transformer, it can be used as electric isolation. Fourthly, the transformer can be used as an impedance meshing circuit. Maybe we have the impression that the transformer is only used to change the voltage. Through this lecture and the following lectures, we will introduce the other aspects of applications. In the following lectures, we assume that there is only air in the magnetic path of the transformer core, so it's called as air magnetic core transformer or air core transformer for short. It should be pointed out that although we discuss the air core transformer, but if the relationship between the magnetic intensity and the magnetic flux intensity of magnetic medium is linear, all the conclusions based on the analysis of air core transformer are also applicable for the mag magnetic core transformer. Okay, we begin to analyze the air core transformer. About the air core transformer, we look at it from the three different aspects. First of all, we look from the power supply, that is, we saw this equivalent circuit seen from the here to the right. The dotted box in the figure is the electrical model of the transformer, where R1 and R2 are the parasitic resistance of the two coils. L1 is the self-inductance of coil 1, L2 is the self-inductance of coil 2, and M is the mutual inductance of them. Z equals R plus Jx is the impedance of the load. Now let's write the equations and analyze such a mutual inductance circuit using the knowledge of previous lectures. First of all, we can use KVL to the primary side. This is equals to this. The only thing should be noted that when using KVL in the right path, the voltage of L1 is not only self-induced voltage, but also mutually induced voltage. Before further analysis, we can combine several impedance components in the figure. We define that Z11 as the sum of all the impedance of the primary side. That is, it is equal to, we define Z22 as the sum of all the impedance of the secondary side, which include the secondary coil and the load. Based on such definitions, we write the equations of the primary side and the secondary side. By using KVL to the primary side, we know that for the mutual induced voltage of the primary side generated by the current of the secondary side, we need to use the concept of the dot convention introduced in lecture 78. The current flows into the non-dot of coil 2 and it will produce a voltage negative above and a positive below on coil 1. So the mutually induced voltage is negative. We still use KVL for the secondary side. Here the excitation is only the mutually induced voltage. 
I1 flows into the dot of coil 1, so it will produce a mutually induced voltage positive above and negative below on coil 2. We write KVL equation according to this direction, so the mutually induced voltage is negative. The two equations covered all the knowledge of the air core transformer. In order to find out the equivalent circuit seen from the source, we need to eliminate I2 in these two equations, that is, substitute this equation into the first equation and simplify it, we can get that You see, it is a typical form of Ohm's law. Its voltage, its current, and its impedance. And the impedance can be divided into two parts, so we can think that it is a serial connection of two impedance. Z11 is obviously the total impedance of the primary side. We can think that a part of omega m square over Z22 is an impedance reflected to the primary side by the transformer, so we call it the reflected impedance. For such an equation, we can draw its equivalent circuit. We define the reflected impedance as ZL. Further, substituting the expression of Z22 into it, we can get the real part and the imaginary part of the reflected impedance respectively, that is. In this equation, R22 is R2 plus R, and SR2 is J omega L2 plus X. Through an analyzing the circuit, we can know that the active power provided by the voltage source is consumed on two parts. The first part is the primary resistance of the transformer. The second part is the resistance part of the reflected impedance, which includes the secondary resistance and the load resistance. Through such equivalent circuit, we can find that the transformer realizes the transmission of the power. That is to say, part of the active power provided by the primary side is consumed on the real part of the reflected impedance, which also includes the real part of the load. So through the transformer, a electrical insulated equipment, we realize that the power is transmitted from the primary side to the secondary side. We also need to point out that here is a minus sign. That is to say the reflected impedance will change the reactance properties of the secondary side. If the secondary side is inductive, it is capacitive seen from the primary side. If the secondary side is capacitive, it is inductive seen from the primary side. This suggests that we can use the air core transformer for impedance matching and achieve the maximum power transfer. Why do we say that? Because it must be inductive for Z11. So if Z22 is greater than zero, that is the uh, impedance of the secondary side is inductive. Due to the minus sign of the reflected impedance, the imaginary part of Z11 and ZL may be with the same magnitude and the opposite size, and thus realize conjugate match. Then it can achieve the maximum power transfer. We will give an example later. 